making a life worth living and retirement worth having comes and goes in many ways. When we're practically thinking about how to produce a life, we're looking at how do I make a life that's worth living that I'm interested in having? How do I produce a result that creates for me a life worth having? This morning, I was sitting in a Kroger parking lot. I was literally working on a grocery list because I had been away for a few days in another state of Illinois. I had been attending a Matsuri, which is a Japanese festival, at a university there that I sort of like and sort of feel that there might be an alliance that could be equipped between my program and the Japanese natives who literally don't speak any English at all, is what I discovered from talking to people who were literally at that event. Very few were actual native speakers, very few actually who were of Nisei or Sansei, which literally means second or third generation Japanese, literally spoke no language at all. And yet they were professors at the university. So when I'm talking about real things, I'm talking about honest things in these audio casts, and there's not a lot I can do other than produce the truth. Now, in my life, I do have a family member who is a middle sister to me, and that is all she is to me. She has literally violently attacked my life in medical records and legal ways. She has gone after me with a vengeance. She has gone after me without God in her soul, and she frankly has destroyed a lot of records of mine. She literally has entered my home through the permission of someone else, not me, and literally taken documentation from my home. She has inappropriately taken a business card of a therapist who is helping me heal from my father's passing and the loss of life and job and other important relationships of my world, and she literally constantly called them and left messages. She also called local police officers who never talked to me about my side of the story at all, and literally that was a sin. They should have not done that, and openly, if they're going to file a police report, shouldn't a police report be two-sided? Shouldn't there be a chance to have a response? Openly, that never happened, and those men who took that report and filed those documents literally have lied on my life. They send people around me all the time, looking, listening, sealing, and they have to get that most of the police officers all bald is probably true. I'm practically bald, but I got a few sprigs, and that's all right. The rest of my hair and my body is mine, literally not for anyone to take from me. And that's just a joke. You see, in our life, we have three things that make us who we are in this world. We have our personage, which is our literal physical being, our mentality, our intellect, our emotions, our structure, our spirituality, our souls. We then have our property. These are the th possessions in which we personally purchase based on the discretionary income that we develop in our life through income streams, through revenue resources, and other aspects of material wealth development. This, in essence, is our property. Our property is something that we literally produce from a storyline in our life. Places we go, people that we interact with who give us literal gifts, and other people who literally guide us to places to find things that we need for our life. I can tell you lots of marvelous stories about that, and I will, in the magic moments that I'm planning to record in the coming days ahead. And finally, we have our legal documentation or our paperwork. When I say legal documentation, I'm literally talking about our birth certificates, our medical records, our mental health files if we've ever needed to talk to someone about anything outside of our family, friends, and colleague network because some things are private and something takes a person who has studied a little bit about how to help draw us out, how to help talk us through things, and how to help us release our rage at people in our life. Because let's face it, living with people, dealing with people is a stressful thing. But when a man is constantly barraged, constantly hazed, constantly financially abused, constantly stolen from, it takes a toll. It creates a rage. It really does. But I'm talking about paperwork. In my life, I have literally have my entire life's work literally stolen from my life. I've had documents from my college days manipulated with the name changed literally on the front page. It was never produced that way, but someone decided they'd make a photocopy, they'd change the name and put it on that document. I've literally had documents representing my employment manipulated by people. I've also had many things like my financial documents of 10 years of banking or more, my tax records of 10 plus years of life, and literally every single medical document that I had a second copy of literally go missing. It's pretty obvious that my sister produced that, st that theft, but I can't prove it. That's the hard part. You see, every moment of time that I got a video camera for my own home, my own protection, my own things, apparently and clearly in a police report, a woman who had no lawful right to enter my home at all, who was a part of the staff where I lived, decided to tell that to police. Who the hell gave her the right to enter my home and say that I had video cameras in the home? 
I never once allowed her in my home. I never once offered her entrance into my home. And I literally told them from the get-go, stay the hell out of my home. The practical reason was that I was putting things together. I was organizing my life. I was basically downsizing from a larger home that I had lost through loss of life. And that happens to people. They go through major losses of people in their life and it impacts them greatly. But someone decided that they were going to literally interfere with my rights. This woman also literally lied on my name, said I was videotaping her, which would have been virtually impossible because I don't produce and don't possess a video camera. I haven't had one since I returned my Apple iPad back to Apple. And you know what literally happened? They didn't ever call me. It was sort of a test of their customer service capabilities. I was getting tired of being basically put upon by that particular tool and that a particular organization's philosophies in life and I literally gave it back. It was something I won for producing a lot of people to an event. I literally produced eight or ten people, I don't remember exactly the number, and I won that iPad. I loved that iPad because it helped me to produce a lot of really good little instructional videos, a lot of really rec good records of my, of my work, but if I say that online, someone might like to try and remove those things, which literally isn't their law right. I've literally had files on my YouTube channel go missing. I've instructed this to YouTube and they have put some back. But the truth is we don't have the realities of life anymore in this world. We have people who voyeur, we have people who walk around, we have people who do a lot of things, but they can't always sit down and talk to someone and that's a problem. In reality we have a lot of things to do in life and we have a lot of things and a lot of people to meet. And when we meet someone literally on our life's journey and we throw that person out of our life, it creates a ripple effect. I think at times they call it a butterfly effect. Sometimes maybe that's why I keep seeing a lot of butterflies in my life lately. But I also know that in native Indian lore, butterflies have a great meaning. And I will look it up later and share it with you later in a magical moment of time. You see, I protect a lot of things in my personage. I literally carry photos of people I love. I carry a bag, a medicine bag from Indian lore that is supposed to have various qualities and chemistries within those little gemstones that are supposed to help the body stay at peace, stay at rest, produce lots of things. It's a belief. It's a faith. It's a little bit of, of oddity, but I like doing it. I used to wear them around my neck, but people were like, what the hell is that? Because they're so out of tune with the world. They really don't recognize other cultures much beyond their own. They gravitate only to people like themselves, and that's pretty normal in life, don't you think? We try and hang out literally with people that like the same things, do the same things, eat the same foods, or literally enjoy the same worship, the same uh, football teams, the same productivity in life. But sometimes in life, we need people to throw us out of our comfort zone. And maybe that's what I sort of do with these audio casts. I throw a few people out of their comfort zones. I know for a little fact that my sibling decided to share that I was posting some things on my website with a police officer, making it as if it was strange. Now, the police officer did the right thing. He literally said, you know, she thinks it's strange, so what? But it still became a legal police report on my name. And literally, other other person who lied and said that I did something or that I was driving through the parking lot without my lights on, who the hell gives a shit if a man forgot to turn his lights on? When I was in Ohio, I literally pulled out of a grocery store uh, late at night. And a very kind sheriff pulled me over and said, hey, buddy, I'd just like you to let you know that even though I'm going to look at your license, I just want you to know you forgot to turn your lights on. And it's kind of important late at night to have your lights on when you're driving. Would you mind putting them on? And he was so professional, so kind, and literally just gave me back my license. He didn't make a big stink. I think he just wanted to look me up. That's perfectly fine, I suppose. And factually, I've spoken with the police officer in McCordsville, of all places, a female cop who literally said, that they don't lawfully have the right to look up a person's license unless there's cause. So think about that. Think about the number of times that you've been pulled over and a guy has literally called you by name, but he never got your license from you. And that's what happens in Indiana with these police officers that don't follow the rules. They literally don't follow the rules. And if I talk about it, I become the shithead of the world, right? And that's why I get pressed upon. That's why I get mobbed. And that's what happens to a lot of reporters who literally are talking about the truth in the world. The truth in this world is that we have rights. We have things that we can do. We have people that we can see. We have opportunities to make calls. We have opportunities to talk to people. And when a relationship goes bad, it's usually our responsibility to try and make it go right. And we literally try very hard to talk to an individual. But if that individual is incredibly immature, they will produce the talk to the hand attitude or the texting method, which is our, I feel, a major adolescent teenager problem of the world. We should only use text messages for meeting people, places, maybe. 
for sharing a little bit of information, okay. But long-winded conversations, drawn-out warfare is ridiculousness. I literally have family members that will take anything I say, anything literally I say at all, and turn it into a monstrous statement. No, it's pretty factual in life. When a person has violated a person's rights, body, or other aspect of their life, it's pretty normal to put up a barrier. Now, if that individual really took the time to say, you are violating my rights, you have violated my barriers and my boundaries, you will stop or there will be no more relationship, that's one thing. That's a healthy way that we handle it. That's something I learned in my 20s from reading a really good book by a famous author, Melody Beatty, that talked about codependency. Unfortunately, the rest of my family didn't actually read that particular book, and that's a real problem, that we have people who put upon us in our boundaries. This morning, literally, I had a problem at Kroger. Was I telling you about this? Oh, yes. I was literally sitting in a quiet parking space underneath a light. The lights of the world of the sun had not come up yet. I was working on my grocery list because I had been gone for a few days and I needed a few items and I always purchase from that particular Kroger. I like that Kroger. They are respectful, they are kind, and even though there's security guards, a bit of a put-upon man, he really is trying to do his job, but he's doing it poorly. But that's just a humble opinion as someone who understands this a little bit, how to protect oneself a little bit. But let me go on to the story. A woman who works for Kroger, a bitchy old woman, a matronly type woman, a woman who's not well keeping herself, literally decided to pull in right next to me, on top of me. Now let's think about this a minute. Men and women have different concepts of space. We have incredibly different concepts of space if our rights, if our bodies, if our hearts, if our souls have been violated by people. And literally, mine has been. When a man has been raped, he's a little sensitive to anybody who pulls upon them. This bitch pulled upon me. I literally stood in front of her and told her to go someplace else. I was not going to have someone pulling right on top of me, sitting there on the telephone, listening to me talk on the phone, or do what I needed to do in that morning. I was doing my prayers, I was doing a lot of things, but how ridiculous that an employee of a national organization, a literal national business organization of groceries, the thought that she was not only representing herself in that moment, but she was. She was literally representing herself in that moment. Here's what this little lady did. Not only did she just stop and not go away, she literally still pulled on me when I got back in the car thinking she got the message. She didn't recognize my rights to say, I'm sorry, this is my personal space. There's plenty of other spaces you can park there. Now, I've had that interaction one time with a man, and I left him a note because I felt like I was a little bit rude, but he had to understand why I was rude. So I left him a little note letting him know why I was a little bit sensitive to that, and I think he probably got it. He probably got it, and he probably made a shift in the future. But men and women have different space. Men do not park on top of each other. They don't sit on top of each other unless they're in love, and there's nothing wrong with that. But openly, that's not my point. My point is that that particular woman did not get how rude she was. But I think she believed she did, because literally, within a matter of seconds, she had two girlfriends in the parking lot, literally calling someone, complaining about me, apparently, and I literally was so pissed off in that moment that she thought she was going to create a scene on my life, that she thought she was going to produce a police officer, which she literally did, and gee, how did they do that? Well, we'll talk about that in our mobbing conversation, but openly, what happened was that she literally pissed me off so much that I drove over next to that young girl who was still staring me down and trying to get my license plate and all this horrible things that employees representing a major national brand were doing and I literally said I am going to make sure and I probably cursed at her because I was pissed I was having a peaceful morning all by my lonesome there was hundreds of parking spaces available and I said I'm gonna make sure you get fired completely because if they put something on my legal name simply because I was sitting in a parking lot making a grocery list and wanted some personal space and respectfully said, you can park elsewhere. Now, people have the right to establish their personal boundaries, even a parking lot. Women do this mistake all the time. They literally will drive right on top of a man. It is foolishness under self-protection. They should always leave one space at least. Women don't get this method. I think they literally do anything and my car will be safer. I will be safer if I pull up an extra man parking lot. No, that is not true. You've just violated a man's space. Men always park one or two spaces away unless they're monstrous men with monstrous trucks who just like to have an attitude about life. Most men, I've observed this a long time, will always park a few spaces away from someone else. They will never violate that space code of ethics.
Now, I'm telling you a real story. I'm talking outside of a Panera where I literally get to do a few things online. Isn't that lovely? In other places I go, a Fisher's police officer will show up. Actually, a really lovely girl showed up this morning, but it was interesting. It was almost immediately after that situation at Croker. Now, how exactly did she find me, and how exactly do they find me on a regular basis? I'd really like to know, but we'll talk more about that in my next journalistic observation post that will tell you how much your manufacturer of your automobile violates your rights. This has been Blake Henson of Blaze Communications talking about inappropriate behavior of employees at the Kroger in Fishers, Indiana, that they literally thought they would produce a scene on a man who was literally sitting in the parking lot trying to write a grocery list of some things he was going to shop for that morning. He was completely off the entrance. He allowed plenty of room for other people to park. There was no problem. It's a public lot for customers. I'm a customer of that store almost every day. When a man doesn't have a refrigerator, he has to buy groceries on a regular basis. That's the life of a man who has no food place of storage. So let's talk about this really. Was that Kroger employee really representing Kroger in that moment, or was she representing herself completely, creating a scene with two other women thinking they would put upon a man's life something hard, something difficult, something purposeful, something to ruin him in some way, shape, or form? I know that woman because I probably talked to her several times on the telephone and every single time she's given me the F word and told me to F off basically when I've asked to speak with the manager. When they didn't come, she told me to F off. When I talked about the realities of people getting on my computer from their internet and literally their employees, she tells me to off off. When I tell her about theft from my vehicle, she tells me to F off. My guess is she's involved in that theft. But that's just my ideology because when someone violates a person's space, their little right to their personhood, the rights to their properties become even less important to that individual. Again, these are just meanderings. These are just observations of humanity. These are just opinions on life. But this is totally a real authentic experience of dealing with one particular woman driving a blue Toyota RAV4, poor RAV4. She has my favorite car, unbelievable, or one of my favorites. But in Ruth, she was violating my right to space and privacy in that moment in a Kroger lot before she was going in to take her lawfully appointed employment as a Kroger employee. Wow, what a great representative of your firm that you think you're going to create a scene on a person with producing a girly powwow of sorts trying to mark a man as a monster. No, she literally pissed me off. She ruined my peace of mind. She destroyed my prayer time. She ruined my list. She destroyed my interest in purchasing at that version of Kroger. And openly, she really ruined her opportunity to represent Kroger, an international brand possibly, definitely a national one. It's in California now for her company. This has been Blake Ensign really talking about customer care, customer service. The way employees don't get their jobs because they're poorly trained is absolutely true. But in most cases, they're so poorly paid that their life is not one worth living, that they are desiring a better life. And the only way some women figure out how to do it is to become monsters in a man's life. Again, Blake Ensign, Blaze Communications, just talking about a real truth, a real experience, and giving you an opinion about how customer service should have gone. She should have literally moved her card immediately. She should have honored the customer over herself. She should have not produced a little girly powwow with three other employees staring me down in a parking lot when I was trying to find a new place to park, literally as if they were stalking me. That is outrageous. I've had other of their employees, young people, literally come up and park right behind me when they were perfectly parked elsewhere, literally doing things to my car. I've had socks stolen from my vehicle in the middle of the night when I fall asleep sometimes. I'm old. I eat something, I sometimes fall asleep. It's not my fault. It happens in life. People should have the right to fall asleep in a safe place. And if a grocery store likes their customers, they will say nothing about any man waiting for his wife, his girlfriend, his children, or any other reason in a parking lot that feeds his household. Again, this has Blake, been Blake Ensign of Blaze Communications, LLC, reporting live from Indianapolis, Indiana.